What's up, Buckeye Nation? You're tuned in to the Buckeye Cast, coming at you loud and proud, bringing strong opinions and salty humor to Ohio State football. These fellas were born and bred in the Buckeye State, and their brand of banter is guaranteed to entertain and excite you. But if you're not a Buckeye, don't bother. Visit us at thebuckeyecast.com and follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube at the Buckeye Cast to stay up to date on all things Ohio State football. And be sure to subscribe on iTunes, SoundCloud, or Stitcher. Now here's your host, Joe Warwick. What's up, Buckeye fans? Thank you for joining us. As the kind lady says, you know how to subscribe to us. You can find us on your favorite podcast app anytime, day or night. And I want to encourage everyone, please, if you have not heard it yet, tell a friend, tell your mother, tell your father, go back and listen to that Urban Meyer interview. That was a fucking radio gold. Right, Ch- right Henry? Absolutely. <laughs> That was hilarious. Um, and please recommend, cool, it, recommend it to somebody. Um, but subscribe, review us. We'd love to hear from you. Um, good or bad, preferably good. Maybe Sean was a little tipsy during that interview. I don't know. Mention that in your, in your review. And uh, don't forget when, to... What's yeah. that? Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> Do you? <laughs> And don't forget about TBC Extra Points. We're still knocking those bitches out after every game. So uh, after this this uh, Penn State game, you may want to p- stay tuned to hear what we have to say, especially if we lose. Oh. <laughs> We're not going to stop with that negativity. All right, sorry. Burn your fucking eardrums out. So let's get into this uh, Beat the Shitney Lions podcast. It was a very interesting drubbing of of the Wolverines last weekend. When you say Sean, oh, it was it was ni- it was nice to see. I was yeah, I was thoroughly impressed. It's hard but to, to not cheer question, for a team. The question remains, you know, was Michigan any good to begin with? Right. I think we're learning the truth. I hope so. I I don't think that was a one off. I don't think that was a you know a shooting star. I think that they are who they thought we were or whatever. Uh, what's his name said? Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, I think, um, what I think someone said it was close at halftime. I watched most of that game and yeah. Penn state dominated their ass. Yeah. It got ugly in the second half quickly. Yeah. But how are the, uh, folks in the fine state of meat chicken taking it? Oh, the whole narrative has changed. You know, now you're getting a little bit of, you know, hearing on talk radio, Harbaugh stuff. And nobody yeah. serious believes that he's on the fucking hot seat at all. Mm-hmm. But assuming he loses to Ohio State this year. That's and then he's, at, then he's at Columbus at Spartan Stadium next year. Mm. Um, and Sparty's going to be good. You know Ohio State's going to be good. If he loses again next year. And and goes you know eight and four nine and three yeah uh, it's, it's going to be a serious conversation with with him. So you're saying you, who knows he's such a fake he could jump ship. Yeah, you you may see the couches burning from Detroit, huh? Mm-hmm. In Ann Arbor, you may, but I don't know. I read the I read the boards on some of that. And they're like, you guys just want Harbaugh gone because you're afraid of him. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I'm afraid he might kill somebody I think on the field. Stay there. Yeah, I mean that guy's that guy's just a goof. And I don't know. Has he ever been good? Decent, I guess. Close. But he gets a lot of accolades for for what? He gets guys to play hard. I'd give him that. Yeah, I would say that too. Maybe slightly better recruiter than Hoke. I think that's fair to say. But can't can't say he's a national championship caliber coach, really. Can't say he's championship at any, at anything, and mm-hmm. I don't know. He gets a pass because he's a Michigan man, right? And, and he's going to get a little bit more flexibility than say a Rich Rod. 
Yeah, but he runs so fucking hot, man. Yeah. That's what ran him out of uh, San Francisco. He's one and four, soon to be one and five against Ohio State, Michigan State. Yep. I mean, and yeah, that, we hung on to Cooper for a decade, mm-hmm. but he's losing to not just us, but Mich- Michigan State every year. Right. Michigan is. Michigan's won like Michigan State's won like eight out of the last ten against Michigan. Wow. They have fucking dominated them. Almost as much as we have. That's surprising. Yeah, eight and two. Last ten years. Mm-hmm. Well. So I don't know. They're they're hurt. They're in denial. They still think that, you know, now now it's switched from, you know, they were such a great team and blah 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 to well, you know, we said from the start with all the guys we lost, it you know it'd be a nine and three type of year. But I'm 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 looking at eight and four. Yeah, for those guys. Yeah, they got to go to Wisconsin. Yeah, they got to play Ohio State. There's two. Yeah, and I don't know who else is on their schedule. They better hope it's well, it's Rutgers this week, I think. But they better hope Illinois or somebody else is on there. Yeah, because they're going to be in a football game with anybody. Well. That- yeah, they got uh, Rutgers, Minnesota. They go to Maryland. Watch that be a, a tight game, because uh, I could see Maryland giving them a ball game at home. Maryland's just on like their fourth quarterback, though, aren't they? That's just they're fucked. Are they? On I think they could be decent. Yeah, I think we knocked their third string one out. And well, then the following week they go to Wisconsin. I'm not sure Wisconsin is a, a number five team. Oh, in the country, they're well, decent. They're not that good. But who's that much better? I mean, you know, the teams ahead of them are certainly. But right. you know, are outside of Ohio State, how many teams behind them are better than them? Yeah, I don't know. I, when I think of a Wisconsin, or I'm, I'm sorry, yeah, a Wisconsin team, I think of like. Uh, you know, somebody that's good, but not top five good. You know, like say a Notre Dame. I know I was banging on them in our last show. Uh, I still don't see, I know they smashed USC and all that, but I still don't see top five team. It just, I, th- I think if they got into the playoffs, into the top four, they'd get Ugh. crushed in their first game, dude. They would not hang with us, Clemson, Alabama. They just don't have the depth. I mean, it's like one of those um, West Coast schools trying to play a, a Southern team. You know, they just don't have the D line depth and stuff like that. I don't know though. They played fucking Georgia down to the wire, and that's their only loss. Yeah, and they just bl- they blew out uh, Michigan State, right? They just blew out USC. Yeah. Uh, Notre Dame, who I can't stand, their resume looks pretty good right now. Right, but if if they stay the course and went out, you know Notre Dame's a darling. They'll get in. Yeah, that's the unfortunate part. It is. Get in the in conference, Notre Dame. Yeah. So you think um, Michigan people are just circling the wagons and trying to stop the bleeding? To use a couple of little messed up cl- cliches there. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I think they're all in denial. I mean, Harbaugh will go. Look, sounds like he's got a bunch of cupcakes lined up, so yep. they're probably going to rip off three in a row here. Sounds mm-hmm. like, and then have a game at Wisconsin, which they could still win. They could beat Wisconsin. Like I said, I'm not 100 percent sold on them. They got, gosh, they got it so fucking easy over there. Yeah. Um, but then they play Ohio State, so I think we're gonna. I think we're going to smash him. Have you heard anything about Wilton Spate? I haven't done my homework on Michigan quarterbacks because it's pretty boring. Uh, but is he out for the year, or is O'Corn the guy just out of default? I think right now, yeah, o- O'Corn's the guy. I haven't heard anything else that uh, Spate's um, last night. I think he cracked some vertebrae or something. Oh, shit. I don't know if that's – yeah, he got messed up. Another spineless Michigan man. So – I think it's O'Corn, but you hear on the message boards they got uh, McCaffrey's little brother. Right. But there's no way he's and, playing. And they got uh, they got another guy. Shoot, I can't think of his name, but they're really high on him too. At least the fans are. Mm-hmm. 
Of course, because um, they don't know any better. <laughs> right. They're like, this guy sucks. Who's next? Right. <laughs> Just keep, keep like, naming guys till somebody works. Yeah, no, you're, you're seeing a lot of that. They're ripping off. Put the new guy in. Season's yeah. over. You're seeing a lot of that shit. Sounds familiar. You, know, you might as well build that. for the future. Yeah. Uh, sounds like something we might have heard about six weeks ago. Right. <laughs> well, you know what? If we lose this game, then I'll... I'm fine with starting someone else. You're off the bandwagon because again? <laughs> You're going to just light the bandwagon on fire? <laughs> no, I'm not. I mean, but I, and and we wouldn't, but I think you'd have to get more time in. I think you'd start seeing Burrow and uh, Haskins in those games and let them play football. If your season's over, if we lose another one, to me, the season's done. But What are you doing? <clears throat> you're playing to get into a good, decent bowl to finish sixth? I don't well, know. You're, you're playing to... Hope you're in hopes that somebody else takes two losses that's above you, you know. But I agree. I guess uh, you two can losses. still get in the Big Ten Championship on an outside. But yeah, you backdoor track. your way in. So yeah, but two losses all but hangs you, you know, for the for the playoffs and probably for the Big Ten. Because so you you're, you're not even really playing for that anymore. Right. Well, yeah, because Penn State would leapfrog us for that. Because assuming you know we would lose to them, that would be the loss, not to fucking right. Michigan. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, interesting times up north. Did you go back and listen to the Urban Meyer interview? By the way, I have not. Oh, I lived it. I'm still taking it in. Okay. Um, so let's jump into this Penn State game. Medical redshirt is a possibility for Demario McCall, who's still not 100. percent that uh, I think a sports hernia surgery he had in the off season still must be uh, holding him back. So I say, you know, this is what week seven, eight. Uh, just just shut him down. He's he's not going to add anything in meaningful time. You know, uh, just playing him in garbage time doesn't do anything for us. So shut him down. But, add him. Add a year on the back end. Yeah, but I mean. I know we want to see him. Fuck, I want to see him. I want to. I want them to interview him during the game on the, but on they, the sidelines. They, they they kept him on the depth chart, and I think that you know he does add a different dimension from all those other guys. But if he's not one hundred percent, I mean, how much is he really adding? You know, we've seen him mop up against garbage teams. No, but if you know, like if Weber, you know, is never one hundred percent. And then, you know, something happens to, you know, J.K. Dobbins, you know, gets dinged up or something and just not necessarily hurt, but just needs some blows. I mean, Antonio Williams has been doing just fine. But, you know, if, if you're in a game where you need shit to happen, I I want McCall in there. Mm-hmm. It's my, my take on it. And I, I, because I'm with you. Otherwise, why wouldn't they just pull the plug on the guy? If they didn't think at some point they're going to need him. Yeah, I, I think they're they're maybe holding on. maybe to keep him motivated to recover. I don't know, maybe or just to see if somebody in front of him goes down. Say J.K. goes down in this game, then that changes the depth chart dramatically. Or say you know, Weber's still not a hundred percent technically, and that Hammy's still bothering him, and J.K. goes down. Then you're looking at Antonio Williams and Demario McCall as your your two running backs. You know, and then a, a kind of hindered uh, Weber, right? So, so I, I don't know. Um, I, I hope that we don't need him, honestly, because I would just rather have an extra year of him than waste, you know, him playing what a couple more halves of football this season. But I, I think maybe he's so good, Joe, that you're not going to get five years. He's not going to be a fifth year senior, Demario McCall. So yeah. it doesn't matter. Okay. He's. I, I think when he plays, I think he'll be a draft worthy guy, and you know some hybrid position in the NFL. Well, well, yeah, yeah. Whatever's best for the team, I'm sure will do. So, but he's not going to put a guy out there that that's, you know, not. You'd probably at some point put Paris Campbell back there, running back, wouldn't you? I always thought that's what he played in high school, and I always thought that was a good spot for him, even though he's a little taller than than most running backs. He's like over six foot. Um, so, but they have not done it yet, uh, for whatever reason. Um, 
he obviously can't catch the ball still, which is something that's going to burn my ass till the day I die. That dude drops more than he catches, in my opinion. So that's why I say, why not stick him in the backfield once in a while, you know? Or jet sweep him. Jet sweep the leg. <laughs> sweep the leg. Jet sweep the leg. So let me throw some stats at you about this uh, Penn State-Ohio State matchup. All right. We'll start on the offensive side of the ball. Uh, these are just team stats here initially. Uh, points per game. This is average points. Buckeyes are second in the country. Penn State is seventh. The uh, difference, I think, was like uh, a few points, seven points at the most. So that favors the Buckeyes. Uh, it's very slight. I like it. Yards per game. Buckeyes are third. Penn State is 27th. So a little bit of a greater difference there. Interesting. And we start getting into the passing numbers. This is where I think uh, things I wanted to highlight were passing yards per game. Buckeyes are 12th. Penn State's 25th. Not, not a huge difference there. But this rushing number is what really caught my eye because everybody talks – you know, on and on about Saquon Barkley. He's a, you know, Heisman, you know, he's in New York already. Might as well be, um, they, they're polishing up the trophy for him right now. So, but the rushing numbers I thought were, were very interesting in the Buckeyes favor. Uh, Buckeyes are 25th in the country in rushing yards per game. Penn state's 55th. Quite a difference there for the supposed, Number one running back in the country. Yeah, no, I saw, uh, well, I think it was on ESPN uh, website. Yeah, they're they're getting 173. A game, we're getting 250. Right. Um, another thing that stands out when I was looking at that as well is J.K. Dobbins has 17 less carries and about 20-something more yards than Saquon Barkley. That'll help the average. Um, let me throw these numbers at you while you're on it. JK is averaging 7.8 yards per carry. Barkley, 6.5. And Yeah, and we're splitting time. Yep. Yeah, he's not the only running back. Plus, JT runs a plenty. And they do. They are polishing that trophy up for Saquon Barkley, but JT Barrett better be in this conversation. Yeah, uh, he's actually fourth right now, I believe, in the Heisman Trophy uh, the uh, odds to win, he's like a 10-to-1 right now. Well, you got Baker Mayfield, JT Barrett, Saquon Barkley, and who else? Uh, Bryce Love from uh, Stanford, uh, running back. But he missed last week's game due to injury. Mm. Uh, i got to find that stat again on the Twitter. But anyway, I forget. Oh, Baker Mayfield was up there. He might have been a 7-to-1. He sucks. I can't wait to play his ass again. Here it is. Please. Yeah. So Saquon is a 4-7. to seven. I don't know why we need to get so weird about the numbers. He opened up at a 20-1. to one. Bryce Love now is a 2-1. to one. He opened up at a 100-1. to one. Oof. Baker Mayfield and JT are 10 to ones right now. So JT hasn't changed at all. He opened at a 10-1. to one. Which is kind of surprising with his performance over the last five weeks. You think he would maybe, you know, gain some ground? Yeah, I mean, I'm, no one's a tougher JT critic than me. Right. Should I just call for him to be benched if they if they lose? <laughs> but he's having a fucking Heisman type of year. He is. Yeah. Twenty one touchdowns, one pick. Yeah. Here's a uh, another JT stat I was going to throw at you tonight. Uh, JT's fourth in the country in uh, QBR. That's based on the ESPN QBR. It, that's a 100-point system. Uh, he's fourth with an 84. McSorley's 25th with a 71. So uh, maybe JT just padded his stats there with the last five weeks. I don't know. Uh, I didn't track it week by week. But uh, I, I find that QBR to be very interesting between the two. I think it shows the uh, age and maturity difference. You know, the fifth-year senior versus, what, sophomore? Yeah, I don't like that McSorley. Those arm punts he was chucking downfield against Michigan were 
weak at best. I mean, that's all he's got, man. That's all he's yeah, ever had. Right. He, he's like Brett Favre. Just throw it up. Yeah. Throw it up and down there. Right. So very interesting numbers to me, especially the last few. Um, the, I think we're going to see a heavy, heavy dose of JK and JT. And I think they're going to try and wear down the Penn State D. How do you see that? I would hope so. You think JT is going to maybe uh, test the secondary? I think we have had two weeks to prepare for this. Yeah. And, you know, if if you're not going to be up and ready to play this game at Ohio Stadium after Oklahoma game and what this game is about, I think our, our offense – Runs as usual, high speed, mm-hmm. and and I'm with you. I, I think you'll see a lot of running, a lot of JT, and I'm, you know, to me JT's got some demons to overcome, and this is where you start overcoming them. Yeah, I um, I think this is a game where we go for 300 plus rushing, you know, and it's it's going to be mm-hmm. one of those lopsided offensive st- statistic games where maybe the focus isn't so much on the pass. I don't know. I think I think you'll see. I think one will lead to the other. I you know if, if we're gashing them for what you say is three hundred, there's going to be some you know, safeties that are real close to the line yeah. towards in the second half. Uh, one thing I should point out though, um, I I made my assessment based on the weather, and which is calling for like uh, wind and rain right now. Oh really? So yeah, I I kind of factored that in, so I kind of cheated. But uh, it was like 20 mile an hour winds two weeks ago in Nebraska, and he whipped it around the field just fine. He did. So the rain I, I know could could be the X factor if it's coming down pretty heavy. But uh, I well, still... and and just so you know, it's about 15 20 degrees cooler than it was probably two weeks ago. It's getting yeah. chilly up north. Yeah. Oh, it was nice today down here, man. It was like. 70 at, at the highest, but sunny and humidity was down. Oh, man. Beautiful. But, yeah, I hear what you're saying. Uh, so you're looking at probably, what, 50 degrees, mid-50s? Yeah, that, I think that's what we've been running lately. I don't know if we had a – So at 330? But I know it's not – yeah, but I, I feel like it's going to be in the 50s. Okay. that's kind of, I think that's what they're predicting right now. Uh, just the rain, I think, will be the, the X factor is – to how heavy that is. <clears throat> That's cold rain when it's when oh. it's fifty degrees. Oh, yeah. Oh, right it down sucks to, to the bone. But I'm with you. I think we'll I think we'll wear them down. I think we'll do it through a lot of hurry up. I think JT will throw a lot of you know quick passes, easy yeah. passes. You know, essentially running plays to keep the chains yeah. moving. Those crossing routes. And, and and they're not they're not going to have enough on defense to, you know, in the second half, late second half, it's going to be tough on them. Yeah. Of course, I would have thought that last year, and we got outscored seventeen nothing in the fourth quarter. So. Yeah. She don't eat the meat, but she sure likes the bone. <laughs> She's a vegetarian. Uh, anyway, uh, one more stat for you on the offensive side of the ball. For the Buckeyes, Isaiah Prince. Uh, this stat blew my mind from my homeboys over at uh, College Football Film Room. Uh, Isaiah Prince, you know, remember him? He was yeah, uh, Turtle Prince. Yeah, he was olaying Michigan guys left and right last we saw him. Uh, but anyway, he is the most improved offensive lineman in the Big Ten. Last year, in 2016, he had 39. QB pressures by himself. That's a lot. This year, his pass blocking percentage is 97%, according to CFB Film Room. That is a a night and day difference. Um, To put that into some context, uh, the rest of the O-line is graded out as a, like Michael Jordan is a 95%, and he's the weak link of the O-line right now. Uh, Jamarco Jones is a 99.1. Billy Price is a 99.6. Bowen, before his injury, was a 96.9. And Knox is a 96.7. Blocking air will get you that. Um, But, yeah, 
that very, very nice turnaround by uh, Isaiah Prince. He really stepped up to the plate and, and uh, upped his game. Well, how, what's that measured on? I mean, that would sound to me like JT's never hurried or sacked at all, if they're all that fucking high. Uh, I, d- I don't have the actual uh, equation in front of me, but I can tell you hurries, hits, and sacks by by the person and penalties, if you want to know that. Right now, I'm looking at Michael Jordan. He's the one that jumps off the page to me as the weakest link. You all are the weakest link. Uh, four hurries, uh, three hits, and four sacks. He's given up the most sacks by far of anybody on the other line. So teams must be targeting him. Uh, Prince has six hurries, but no hits and no sacks. These are the same number of snaps. These guys are all at 227 on total snaps. And then the icing on the Michael Jordan fucking cake is five penalties for 36 yards leading the offensive line. And Prince just three penalties for 20 yards. So... uh, Jamarco Jones, the reason he's a 99-1 is because he has zero hurries, one hit, one sack, one penalty. And then Billy Price, of course, is a 99-6 because he's even better. One hurry, zero hits, zero sacks, zero penalties. So if that puts anything in the context, I hope that helps. Billy Price is a beast. Yeah. No well, good. Starts. There's no there's no excuses for JT not to have a kick ass game with that kind of line. Yep. Of course, this be. is this is by far the best D that we're we will have faced. Exactly. That, yeah, they should keep him upright, and that leads me right into the defensive stats. Um, Penn State first in the country at points allowed. So there's that. Buckeyes are tenth. Um, not a great difference between the two, obviously, but, um, that, that stat is kind of startling when you look at, not to me, no, just because of this, I feel that Penn state has been in more games than we've been in. You look at our our numbers and this stat would be bad to see because it'd make us look like we're weak in the fourth quarter, but we give up points in the fourth quarter. We do it because we're up by so much. We're playing really soft D and getting in new guys. And so we give up points in the fourth quarter. Yeah. I don't feel bad about that at all. And, and, and that drives the thing up when you're in a tight game, we wouldn't be giving up those points. So I, to me, that stat is a, they're both impressive, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you, but if you're not watching the games, it can be a little bit misleading. I think Ohio State's D is. I'll take Ohio State's D right now over anybody's in the country. Yeah. I think you could qualify all these stats by going pulling the the schedule card. You know. Uh, yeah. Saying that Penn State got fat on some chumps is definitely not out of the realm of possibility. We haven't played any D2 schools where they have. I, th- I think you could pull that card on, on both teams to a degree. Uh, I would say maybe Penn State a little more so, even though uh, they did have the, the tough game, you thought, versus Michigan. And they played Pitt. Uh, they barely escaped Iowa, which that should not have been a, a close game. But uh, they played a Georgia State. They played Akron. Uh, Northwestern, uh, I don't see any cupcakes like that on the Buckeyes schedule. At least we played Big Ten teams, you know. Uh, Army, I don't think they're a cupcake. UNLV. Well, and Herb isn't going to run it up on a service academy. Right. And we still scored 38, which is maybe running right. it up to to that degree. But UNLV, I would call the only cupcake, honestly. Eh, the rest Rutgers is all Big Ten. Well, I, but I'm saying it's all conference opponents, whereas the Penn State non-conference schedule is weak as fuck. Georgia State, Akron. Who else? Pitt. Oh, Pitt, who sucks. Yeah, they they got beat last year by Pitt, so you know obviously they're motivated in that game, and that's what actually kept them out of the playoffs. It's kind of funny, so... 
Uh, and then, you know, like I said, they narrowly escaped at Iowa on the last play of the game. I know. They were so... So... Uh, That's fine. They're great. They're number two, and we get to play them. They're frauds. We're going to expose them. Exactly. I, that's what I'm saying. Anyway, back to the defensive stats. Yards per game. That's where, that's where we left off. Buckeyes are 16th. Penn State is 9th. Again, you can uh, point to the schedule if you want and say, you know, we gave up 350 to Nebraska, but most of it was late, you know. Uh, through That was just through the air, by the way. Kind of skewed passing yards per game. Buckeyes are 37th. Penn State 7th. What's up? Yeah, but you know what I'd love to see is last five game stats. Okay. We were we were new growing into it, Indiana, Oklahoma, which again were probably the two toughest games we've had so far. Right. Um, but where's it been since then? Our D's, we, we're not giving up shit. Yard, what did Rutgers have for total yards? Less than 100? Yeah. And like 20 of that came on like one run. Yeah, again, you know, you, you could point to a few different things there to say that those are skewed. Like, like I just said, uh, the Nebraska game, we gave up 350 through the air, but most of it was in the second half. And, you know, you got second and third string corners in there and safeties. So, uh, but rushing yards, we're both very close. Uh, Buckeyes are 14th, Penn State's 17th. I like I said, I think that number is going to grow for Penn State. You guys are going to fall. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I would think so. Going to take a little tumble. And, what do they get? A buck fifteen? Uh, I don't recall the actual number. Some interesting stats here. I read uh, Penn State against Michigan sent extra rushers on sixty-two percent of first down plays. So think about that. 62%, that's almost two-thirds of Michigan snaps on first down. Penn State was blitzing. Sure. Something to keep in mind. Obviously, I'm sure JT has, has heard this number and Herb as well. And to hype up Penn State a little bit, they are number one nationally at three and a half sacks per game. You know, We're supposed to have the best D-line in the country, but uh, we definitely aren't even close in the, uh, the sack stats. Because people plan for it, I feel. Yeah, they're they're playing the two and three step drops and move the yep, pocket throws. Yeah, you're not seeing people drop back and be comfortable against the Buckeyes. I haven't seen it yet. Right. You're not going to. And finally, the Nittley, Shitley Nittley Lions, they are number eighth nationally with eight tackles for loss per game. Interesting numbers. Uh, I don't. I don't see them putting up those kind of averages against us. This is a whole different animal. I I can't argue that point. It's it is a different animal. It's a di- different animal for us. I'm this is an exciting game. This is yeah. good college football right here. Oh yeah, this is this is the big one everybody's been pointing to. You know, uh, everybody was like, oh, see what you do. You know, after you beat on these these five losers in the Big Ten. If you make it to Penn State, you know, then we'll see what you got. So we're there. We are at that point. Boy, we're at the grind, man. It's it's going to be a grind from here on out. Yeah. You know, we got one little Illinois game late, I think. but This is the big one. So let's get into our uh, microscopes and our predictions. Who do you have on offense, Henry? Super tough, but I think I'm going to go uh... – I wanted to go Dobbins, but I'm going to go JT Barrett. Mm. To me, this is, again, this is the JT Barrett. Win a big game at, at all costs, JT Barrett. There's there's no excuses. There's no tomorrow. This is the game. you got to win this game in front of you, and a lot of it's going to be put on him. They're going to throw a lot of exotic stuff at him, and I just I want to see him step up and you know just flat out be like, holy shit, that dude is a boss out there. Mm-hmm. He completely has been, but, again, Against lesser opponents, this is going to be a tough, uh, a tough game for him. Our last few big games, he's not looked great. So, JT Baird on offense. I wanted to go. I wanted to go Dobbins just because his numbers rushing, probably not mm-hmm. receiving, but he's right there with Barkley. Yeah. Lest we forget, uh, JT's freshman year, he put the team on his back in overtime yep. at yeah, Penn State. That was the the night of the infamous Bosa double sack. <laughs> yeah. 
that won the ball game. So yeah, uh, I think JT definitely. Ever since 2014, uh, I think he wants to prove this is you know he can win it too. You know, he wants to prove that this is his team and he can take us you know to the playoffs. And coming off last year and the fucking yeah. that herb blew that. We ran that fucking field goal team out there with like two seconds left on like a fifty something yarder yeah. in shitty conditions and that was some shitty in game coaching. Someone fucking panicked on that. Yeah. Cause there was a lot wrong with that and we still should have won the game. Even if I don't know, I could go on forever. But worst case scenario you just fall on the ball if you're a buckeye. All right. You don't let him return it, you know, was it 60 yards for six? You're better off taking the the sack, you know, after the muffed kick. Anyway. Still, we had a timeout. Call the timeout. Don't run him out there. Right. He's not ready and scrambling. Yeah. So anyway, <laughs> just... yeah, we that... got fucking derailed there in a hurry. Yeah. Um, so your defensive microscope. My defensive microscope is going to be my my boy I hadn't called out in a while, Baker. Ah. You know, I think he's going to have to have a big game for us. Uh, I think he's going to have a couple big responsibilities. One of them, Saquon Barkley, and the other one's that tight end, Gusecki. Yeah, that's one thing I didn't bring up is that fucking Pollock. Um, that dude's a big play waiting to happen, you know, with he's- Sir, yeah. Sir Chuck's a lot, just whipping it downfield, and Gasecki will go up and get it. So, yeah, he's definitely a big problem. Um, he is, especially with, you know, we're going to find out if, if the linebackers learn their lesson at all from that play action where they get hung up. And if if they do, Gasecki's going to have a nice game. So, yeah. ba- Baker, yeah. Baker, the whole, I was going to call out the whole linebacking core, so I think they're all going to have that responsibility. But They're going to make or break this game, potentially, you know. By shutting down Barkley and then covering Gesicki. I, I think you come in and you shut down Barkley and makes you gotta make McSorley beat you. He's not that good. Right. I agree. But, but do you spy McSorley though on defense? Because he's he'll gash you with his legs. He put up like eighty yards against Michigan, you know. And but Michigan had a fucking linebacker trying to cover Saquon. That was fucking stupid. That dude was I don't know. Close. I mean, they had their slowest linebackers, what I read, but I don't know. I mean, someone like someone like Baker's probably going to be taxed with that at some point. Yeah, certain certain looks. But Baker flies. All our linebackers fly. So mm-hmm. I'm not that worried about it. I we'll we'll see about Saquon Barkley. I think we shut him down. He he ran all over us his first year. We had him shut down pretty much last year, didn't we? Yeah. And but Northwestern was shutting him down. I think I think we'll do just fine against him. Make McSorley beat us. If McSorley can throw for 400 yards and five touchdowns, then mm-hmm. fine. I don't think he can. Yeah, again, like we mentioned earlier, they they're going to have to run a quick, you know, two and three step drops. They're not or move McSorley out, which he is dangerous with his legs, like I just said. But they're going to have to move him off of that, uh, out of that pocket. Otherwise, he's going to get smashed. And I think Buckeye D line is just been waiting to feast on somebody. It seems like they haven't had a big sack game, you know? Yeah, but he's going to be running around like, but he's going to have some dudes chasing him. Hubbard, Holmes, Bosa. Right. These boys are coming. I don't yeah. care where you're going out of that pocket. Yeah, so uh, from my microscopes, I'm, I'm kind of in line with yours. Uh, I actually chose Dobbins because I think he's going to be the, mm-hmm. the workhorse and we're going to need him to have his best game of his young career. Um, he's going to get 20, 25, I doubt more than 25 carries, and then sprinkle in Weber with 10 to 15. I think this is going to be a run-heavy offense we're going to see, and I, I think we're going to try and road grade o- right over that D-line and mix in some JT as well just for, for uh, to keep them honest. And so JT or JK is my guy on offense. Worley. I want to see him play like out of his mind. We haven't seen much of him this year due to the foot injury, but he needs to have a big, big game. And, and this is uh, the best opportunity he's going to have for a while. So let's get into these Agreed. predictions. Can't go wrong with those. Uh, predictions sure to go wrong. 
Buckeyes are right now favored by six and a half with the over under at 57. So not a high scoring affair, maybe a, a defensive struggle for a bit. Who do you have? Well, I think the Buckeyes are pissed from last year. I think they outplayed that game. I think you're looking at a Buckeye route, 45-17. Oh, boom. Wow. Didn't see that one coming. You, you people I, must I did, be I, you know, I had that prediction, though, before you I, – I, I had that prediction before you told me about the weather, but I feel like I'm sticking with it. JT did well in the wind in Nebraska, and the Buckeyes are going to be on a mission. Very nice. Yeah, big win for the Buckeyes. We we beat them just like they beat Michigan. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I agree. I don't think they hit the fifty-seven total, but I think the Buckeyes roll. Um, first half is going to be tight, uh, you know, close within a field goal going into halftime, and then I think the Buckeyes make their adjustments at at halftime and, and just roll over the late third and, and early fourth quarter and and score quickly. I, I think. Um, I'm going to go like 38-10, 38-13. That sounds better. Yeah, I, I, I don't see us getting blown out. I will say we have a kind of a, a terrible history of playing at home in big games. Think back to Michigan State, Oklahoma this year. So you can, you can point to a few different issues we've had, especially with weather. Uh, again, with the Michigan State game, bad weather at home. Uh, Zeke didn't get fed enough, obviously. It's going to be a good one. I don't see it getting ugly on the scoreboard until late, in the mid to late fourth. I don't know. I mean, we'll see. If if McSorley's throwing up them and, and we pick a few of those off, I think we get them in a bad spot early. Mm-hmm. And, again, as long as our if we can get that uh, high-paced offense going – Keep you know getting first downs, yeah. Not screw our D. I don't know. I like Ohio State in a route. I think this is a statement game for us. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, I don't think Penn State has the D line depth. Obviously, not not to measure up to us, but uh, just even an average D line depth. They may have good starters. Uh, I can't name a single one of them, but I don't think they have the depth. And like you said, we get into that tempo offense where those dudes are left on the field for five, six, seven, eight plays in a row, and, you know, we start gashing them. That's where J.K. comes in and drops a hammer on them. Yeah, I, I think that's what it's going to be. I'm, I told a guy last night, I'm more worried about the Michigan State game than Penn State. <laughs> Those fucks always play us hard. They were 3-9 and nine last year and almost beat us. Right. Yeah, and they're, they're ranked. Michigan's not. <laughs> so there's that's, that. <laughs> yeah. Everyone's aware of that up here. I'm I sure. love it. Nice. Well, Let's close it out. As you know, hit us up, subscribe, and review us on your favorite podcast app. And uh, where's my boy Jason with a Twitter question? Yeah, we didn't have any Twitter questions. I think we bur- we blew our load there on the Urban Meyer interview episode. Oops, sorry. Yeah, thanks, Jason. We appreciate your questions last week. But anyway, uh, let me remind you guys while we're on it is go back and listen to that last episode. It was episode thirty one. Uh, I'm gonna go back and listen to that. <laughs> it's pretty good. It's not our best work, but uh, for our first interview, I think we did well. Keep your eyes open for more interviews coming down the road. I I, I got a, a good one teed up. I think uh, we're going to be able to get later in the season, let's just say that. But uh, nice. anyways, yeah. I did. Anyway, uh, don't forget about TBC Extra Points. Uh, hit the website, thebuckeyecast.com. Uh, social media, at the Buckeye Cast. And uh, thank you for joining us. We appreciate it. Henry, good to talk to you. This is going to be a big one. I hope you got full stock of beer in the fridge. I don't yet. This is going to cause for a good one, though. I'm going to drink some good beers and enjoy this game. Yeah, maybe get some bourbon to, to celebrate with after. Maybe. Bad. We'll see. If they lose, I'm fucking bummed. And you pound the whole bottle. Bad. All right. Thank you for joining right. us, folks. We'll see you on the flip. Uh, check out the extra points coming out after the game. Henry, take Peace. care. Peace. See you. It's fun.